Uh, thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. Well, so, it was good to be with you. Um, we'll just jump right into it. Um, sure. Bishop Burbage's installation is two weeks away. Uh, what are your feelings as retirement approaches? Well, first of all, I have a, an immense feeling of gratitude. Gratitude to so many people in our diocese. Obviously to my brother priests, who have been such great co-workers with me all these years. But also to our deacons, to our religious, to our faithful laity. Um, it's been a great joy for me to have been here as the bishop. A true gift from the Lord. Not that everything has been perfect, because no life is perfect. But if you, if I put everything on a scale, I have to say that the scale goes way up here to the good. And I have great, great memories of, of being here. So there's great gratitude. Gratitude, too, for the occasions that I've had to ordain priests. That's probably one of the greatest joys of a bishop. And we have about 72 priests in the diocese that I've ordained in this diocese. And, and then uh, the confirmations is still another great joy for me. It's never boring. Everyone is like the first. The great growth of our diocese, um, that's a great gratitude, I have a lot of gratitude for its growth because that means that people everywhere, our priests, religious, to laity, together we've cooperated in responding to that growth with new parishes, a new high school, other new schools, new initiatives, um, and then the immense uh, ingathering of different cultures since I arrived. It truly has become a multicultural diocese. So for all of these and many other gifts uh, that have been mine as I've been here, gifts of people's time and talent and energy and goodwill and prayer, I'm extremely grateful. There's also a part of me that's sad, right. you know. Um, I, I think of that line in the preface, though it's the preface we use for, for the Mass for the dead, it still has great meaning even in life, and that is, well, you know, well, life changes, it does not end. And so there'll be a change in my life. Um, I'll go to retirement in that sense. I'll still be a bishop, obviously. I still will be doing, hopefully, many Episcopal and priestly things. But it will be different. And so that brings a certain sadness. I'm going to miss the staff here, right. the familiarity with people here. You know? And also I'll miss, in a sense, strange as it sounds, the schedule. Yes, sometimes it's very, very packed, but Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, it gets me out, I get to see people, and it'll be different. Mm -hmm. But lastly, so there's gratitude, sadness, but also there's expectation. You know, a new chapter is opening, and hopefully I will be able to assist our bishop, but also do spiritual retreats and spiritual uh, re um, direction for people, and help out in parishes, so um, it'll be good. Mm -hmm. I was talking with the priest who has retired recently, over in the Washington area. And he's aware of a seminary in Vietnam that needs books. And in fact, as he retired and got rid of some of his books, he, that's where he sent them. So I thought, well, that's a good thing to do. So books that would be appropriate for the seminary, I will send there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what advice would you give young Catholics who are considering their religious vocation? First of all, I would ask them to begin to pray on a regular basis every day to go to Holy Mass, if they can every day, but as often as they can during the week, obviously on Sunday. In other words, to have a devotional life that's really alive and personally alive with the Lord. Then to begin to talk with people who are aware of that, vocation director, for example, here in the diocese would be Father Jaffe for diocesan priests. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the head of a religious order or vocation director from a religious community. And then I would say enter if you still f that person still feels a strong interest. Not a decision, in the, in the hard sense of decision, because seminary, novitiate, these are places of discernment. Because you can't test it out in the world. The culture is adverse, and uh, 
it, it, it's like when you're growing a young plant, you need to give it the right amount of food and light, protective from adverse conditions. Mm -hmm. Not the plant will die. And that's how it is with the seeds of vocations. You need to nurture them. And the best place to see, if you're interested, is to be in that environment. And you can't lose. It's win-win. Either you, dis you discern God wants you and you continue, or you discern God doesn't want you in that vocation. Now you know something for certain. It's not there he wants you. But also you've received a wonderful formation in the faith, and also a good education, which will carry you in other lives. You talked around this time last year about Arlington's future bishop being the right bishop for the time. Uh, would you say that Bishop Burbage's appointment confirms that? Absolutely. I am so delighted with his appointment. He really is the right man, in my, in my judgment, for uh, this diocese. First, he brings the, the ability and the strength of having been a diocesan bishop, which means he knows how to, to lead a diocese. You can be an auxiliary bishop, and, and that's many, many wonderful things you, you do and, and, and execute, but you do not have the responsibility of leading a diocese. So as an auxiliary, you learn much, but one of the good things is that when you've done whatever your assignment has been, um, whatever the decision is, it's not yours, it belongs to the head of the diocese. So you bring that to your archbishop or bishop and say, I've done my best, here it is, my recommendation is, and you leave it there with him, and he'll make the decision. When you're a diocesan bishop, it's on your desk, and that's it. Now you make the decision. So he brings that ability to, to know how, to, and he communicates so well. Uh, he's created with technology. Um, he, he knows how to reach people, and uh, he also knows finances very well. He's a prayerful man, he's a man of the church. He prays himself, he studies church documents. And beyond that, um, you'll find that um, he'll continue to do what he did when he first came. Notice when he was here for just that day and a half, he went out to many different groups, um, and he's going to continue to do that. And that's the kind of man he is. The advice I would give is, Bishop, continue what you already began when you first came into our midst on October 4th. That is, you so beautifully reached out to groups of people, different people, and continue to, to do have that wonderful, welcoming, um, attractive style, and, because your personality will draw people not to you, but to the Lord and to his church. That's the first advice I would give. Uh, this is a complex diocese in many ways, complex because of the different factors that go into it. And so I would say continue to do as you do, first of all, to listen carefully as you do, and then to consult as you do, and then to communicate. And um, you know, you'll find that uh, that's a wonderful combination of a way to lead that you do so beautifully already. Um, it's also going to be, um, in some ways, a busier diocese than Raleigh. Now, I, I don't know Raleigh, and I don't imply you're busy. What I mean is that there's so much complexity here. Um, you have less mileage to travel, mm -hmm. but sometimes you will sit in traffic, and you wish you were back where you could be using that hour that you're sitting, going somewhere. You sit there. You get used to that, because it can be very... Um, annoying and vexing at times. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is, because you have such energy, such a passion for people, uh, I would say to use a, a Latin phrase that you'd be familiar with, festina lente, you know, uh, go quickly, slowly. And so that's, that's the kind of combination I would advise you to do. Go, go quickly, yet slowly, and remember your own health, your own good, and uh, You'll just be a wonderful shepherd leading us to Jesus. I'd like to uh, express a word of gratitude, especially to the staff here at the Chancery. Um, and first of all, to my inner staff, uh, those, those are the people I work with intimately, closely every day. I see them every day. But we have a larger staff. And every one of them, in my estimation, contributes to the good of this diocese not just to the good of the administration, but the administration is here to support parishes for everyone. And so everyone here has worked and does work so hard for, to, that, to that event, that effect. So I want to say thank you. I've often said, and I'll repeat it here, 
I am most blessed among bishops because I have the greatest staff than any bishop has anywhere, certainly in the States, I'd say in the world, a great staff. And I'm pleased that the great bishop will come to inherit a great staff. But I want to say thank you to them with all my heart. We've all been great.